the first vertebrates on our planet. They outlived the dinosaurs, managing to survive numerous catastrophic events easily. They also caused the extinction of the mighty Megalodon, the most fearsome predator the world has ever known. Sharks. These amazing creatures continue to astonish scientists even now. Seriously, they surprise us every single day. Curious to see sharks in a whole new light? Then stick around till the end of this video. One of the most important factors about sharks is that they need to retain salt inside their bodies. It may sound a little weird, but without salt, the shark cells will simply burst one by one, causing abdominal bloating and death. You should be grateful for this weird part of their anatomy, as this is what keeps most sharks out of fresh water. When these predators gulp down fresh water through their gills, it messes up their body's salt balance right away. This causes the shark to sort of puff up, even if it's a massive great white. Surviving such a bloating would be next to impossible. But of course, sharks have more than one interesting quirk. While scientists have already cracked the mystery of their stomach bloating, there's still some puzzling situations out there. Take for instance what happened one day in mid-October 2019. Some researchers were out diving in a cage near Guadalupe Island, their usual routine, when out of the blue they came face to face with a rather peculiar shark. It didn't take long for the team to notice a massive, fresh scar stretching from its left eye all the way down to its fin. What made it even more intriguing was how nonchalantly the shark carried itself, as if that scar didn't bother it one bit. But what kind of shark was it? Over the next week, people got to know it better. And then after another couple of weeks, the team teamed up with Discovery to make the shark a star. It was nicknamed the Joker. The shark not only stole the show in the filming, but also acted like a true star and seasoned pro. It was as if every time the team set out their bait and cameras, the shark was there, ready to roll. Maybe swimming in from its underwater trailer or something. It's still a mystery how that shark ended up with such a fearsome scar and didn't lose any of its mobility. If you've got any ideas, share them in the comments below. At this point, I started wondering whether giant squids might actually square off with the sharks. And it's not just a wild guess. A recent study shows that in the Pacific Ocean, great white sharks are getting into scuffles with giant squids. Researchers came to this conclusion by checking out the scrapes and suction cup marks on these sharks, and it's pretty clear that no one else could have left those marks. They've recorded these incidents around Guadalupe Island, right where they found the Joker shark. The researchers observed 14 young great white sharks with some odd scars on their bodies for five years, from 2008 to 2019. Most of these sharks weren't fully grown yet, and they had these strange scars on their heads and bodies. These scars had either two layers or a single layer with lots of sucker marks around the shark's head and between its dorsal and pectoral fins. But it's not like the squid was trying to snack on the young shark, right? Was it just a fight? Well, some of these sharks had injuries that make it pretty clear that the squid was just defending itself to avoid becoming shark lunch. In a nutshell, any underwater jury would probably call it self-defense. And it's not too surprising that the squid would leave these kinds of marks on the shark. Octopuses are good at attacking sharks, so how is a squid any worse? <laughs> how about a rare albino baby shark with just one eye, looking like a harbinger of doom from the myths or a quirky result of strange experiments? Well, on October 10th, 2020, fishermen in Indonesia stumbled upon just such a remarkable creature. They found this baby shark inside the belly of an adult shark they'd caught. And needless to say, they were absolutely astonished. Anyone would be taken aback because this little one had an eye right in the middle of its head and a completely milky white body. This paleness often indicates a lack of melanin, which is responsible for coloring. Just take a look at it. It's not just the single eye, it also has a somewhat human-like appearance. Eventually, the baby shark was handed to the experts who determined that it was afflicted with a condition called cyclopia. It's also found in other animals, including humans, but in the case of our species, it's one in a million. Cyclopia typically becomes apparent during the early stages of development when the brain and eyes are forming. Usually, a cyclops lacks a brain and often experiences severe brain damage. As a result, these creatures often pass away within their first few days of life, and sometimes even before birth. When the white baby shark was removed from its mother, it was already dead. Back in 2011, a similar shark was discovered in Mexico, also extracted from a deceased mother, and it too was white. Scientists have previously documented such sharks, but only in their embryonic stage. 
The fact that none have ever been found outside the womb underscores the notion that Cyclops have a brief lifespan. If not for the fishermen, we might never have learned about these creatures. In another bizarre twist of nature, there's this story about a creature people dubbed the shark with a human face. An Indonesian fisherman and his brother accidentally caught a pregnant female shark. As they sliced it open, they discovered three little shark pups inside. So far, seems quite an ordinary story, right? But here's where things take a sharp left turn. Two of the shark pups bore a striking resemblance to their mom, but the third? Well, it looked quite unusual. It had a face eerily reminiscent of a human being. The supposedly captured photos revealed a pair of large, closely set, and oddly cartoonish eyes. It might seem comical at first glance until you wrap your head around the fact that this creature isn't some animator's creation, and that's when it starts to get downright eerie. Unfortunately, we don't know the details of what happened to this shark. All we've got, just like the scientists, are these images. No in-depth analysis has been carried out, but when the experts saw these photos, they leaned toward the idea that it's another case of Cyclopia, even stranger than the ones we've seen before. Let's go back to 2020. On the morning of August 27th, a drone caught sight of a young great white shark off the Santa Barbara coast. This shark had a twisted left pectoral fin, and while the fin itself was intact, it was bent up at nearly a 90-degree angle, practically flush against the body. Surprisingly, despite this peculiar deformity, the shark swam just like any other, not swaying off course. However, it seemed to put in extra effort to move normally. We can't say for sure if this fin deformity was something the shark was born with or if it happened later in life, possibly due to an injury, maybe a fracture. By the way, on the evening of January 17th, 2021, nearly five months after the first sighting, the same shark was spotted again in the same area. This means that even if it was a recent injury, this predator had figured out how to adapt and keep on living. Let's not forget, great white sharks are super agile hunters that can really swim fast. But when one of their pectoral fins is deformed, it totally messes up their swimming. So every hunt becomes a real challenge for these sharks. If they don't have a pectoral fin at all, they might start swimming all wonky, sideways, or just going in circles. Imagine trying to grab a snack like that. This predator seems to have found a workaround, maybe nabbing slower prey or scavenging for carrion. It's probably not cut out for long migrations like other great white sharks in the region. It could spell trouble down the line, but for now, this shark's holding its own. We can't predict how long it'll keep it up. What's obvious is that each situation is unique. Whether the animal makes it or not depends on a bunch of factors, maybe even on how stubborn they are. It's just not accurate to claim that all sharks can thrive without a fin or that none will endure. We can only wish them luck. And then Steve and I thought it would be good to tell you why sharks need so many fins. When it comes to humans, it's a no-brainer. We've got two arms and two legs, but sharks? Well, they've got a far more interesting setup. Let's talk about that first dorsal fin, the one you've seen slicing through the water in movies. It's perched on the shark's upper back, and its job is to keep them stable in the water. You know, so they don't end up flipping over and can pull off those sharp turns. Now on to the second dorsal fin. It's a bit smaller and sits right between the first dorsal fin and the tail. This one also helps with stability, but this time it's all about steering the back end of the shark. The pectoral fins are often thought of as the shark's wings. They're a pair of fins located on either side of the body along the pectoral muscle line. They control the direction of the shark's movement too, and help it keep its balance as well as make turns, swim up or down, and roll its body. The pelvic fins are usually located on the sides of the body between the pectoral fins and the tail. They're smaller than pectoral fins, but their function's the same. There are also anal fins, though not in all shark species. They also help to keep them stable in the water. Yes, it is vital for sharks to control their position. You probably know that a shark flipped over on its back can fall into a kind of trance. It's tough to be a fearsome predator if you can suddenly zone out for a few minutes. Finally, the tail fin is used to propel the shark forward, increasing or decreasing speed and thrust. In certain shark types, the tail fin also comes in handy for protection and catching prey. You might have thought that the first dorsal fin, which tends to spook humans the most, is absolutely crucial for sharks, the one they can't do without. However, in October 2014, a professor at the University of Queensland stumbled upon an adult female gray reef shark without this fin, and surprisingly, the shark seemed quite fine. 
Sharks often sustain injuries during mating, encounters with predators, intraspecies scuffles, and due to various human activities. Strangely, we know very little about how well sharks can heal, and there's absolutely no data on the long-term survival of injured sharks. Why? It's a bit of a mystery, really. After carefully analyzing pictures of a shark missing its fin, scientists concluded that the shark naturally lost it and humans weren't involved. Fast forward four years to 2018, the same shark was spotted looking completely healthy, as if its missing fin hadn't affected its shark life in any way. So it's safe to say that gray reef sharks can thrive even after losing their dorsal fins. This resilience can be attributed to their status as reef sharks, a species known for their varied diet and distinct hunting methods. The first involves stalking prey in open water. The second way is searching for injured fish among the coral. And while the loss of a dorsal fin would probably impair the shark's ability to catch prey at high speed, the second method would still work fine and it appears to be sufficient for survival. But it is worth saying that experts are confident even the first method of hunting is not completely unavailable for this shark. The key is to keep the second dorsal fin and the tail fin intact as they help with speed. Now when it comes to that first fin, well it seems like it's not absolutely necessary. But if this happened to a different shark species like the mako shark, chances are they wouldn't make it without that missing fin. But we won't know that until it happens to some other shark, so we shall wait and see. What do you mean, wait? Um, that came out wrong. Seems like we've figured out the fins. What about a shark with scoliosis? For us humans, having a curved spine might be quite common, but for sharks, it's like game over. But first things first. People at the Mississippi Aquarium noticed that Stella, a sand shark measuring about 5 feet and weighing in at 88 pounds, was having a tough time swimming. It turns out Stella had a bent spine, which made swimming a real struggle. She was burning loads of energy just trying to move around, had no sense of direction, and on top of that, she'd lost her appetite. Out in the wild, these issues would have meant a death sentence for sure. Fortunately, Stella had people around. They took her for an x-ray, which revealed that the shark indeed had a damaged spine. Stella was diagnosed with scoliosis and kyphosis, which are sideways and outward curvature of the spine. The vet decided it was worth taking the risk to perform a groundbreaking surgery, but before going ahead, the vet had to thoroughly study the shark's anatomy, saying, it's about as close to operating on an alien that you can get. To the best of their knowledge, no one had ever operated on a shark's spine anywhere in the world. The team went as far as creating a custom table to support Stella, ensuring she could breathe through her gills while keeping her surgical site dry and safe. It might seem like conflicting requirements, but they successfully pulled it off. Over a dozen specialists worked on Stella for two hours, and it appears that all their hard work paid off. The shark's now swimming normally and eating well. However, there's one catch. Despite the vet's efforts, Stella still looks a bit unusual. But most importantly, the defect doesn't prevent Stella from leading a normal shark life anymore. And now look at this. No, your eyes aren't deceiving you. This fish has no teeth. No skin either. And it's indeed a shark. In July 2019, fishermen in the Mediterranean Sea south of Sardinia accidentally pulled this mutant from the depths. Actually, it's a black mouth cat shark, but unlike its relatives, it was born without skin and teeth. This rare catch is the first and only known case of a shark living with a severe lack of all skin related structures, including teeth. That's what scientists say, and who are we not to believe them? Believe it or not, this shark led a completely normal life despite its unusual condition. When scientists checked it out, they figured it was about three years old, which means it was growing just like any other shark. Let me fill you in some more. When they peeked inside its stomach, they found it was full of food, so it wasn't struggling to find its meal either. You'd think a shark without skin wouldn't stand a chance, right? But nature had a surprise in store for us researchers. Due to these quirks, this shark probably wasn't the strongest swimmer among its kin, but that didn't stop it from being a successful hunter. Even the lack of teeth didn't hold it back. The scientists discovered 14 different things in its stomach, like small cephalopods, crustaceans, and some bony fish. The thing is, this shark family usually just swallows its food whole, so teeth weren't all that important. You know, the Mediterranean Sea is home to some pretty peculiar sharks. Take, for instance, the one they discovered here with a face resembling that of a pig. If this had happened in the Middle Ages, people would have thought it was a demon. 
In the water, this shark may seem like a typical shark, a swift predator with those sharp dorsal fins, but take a closer look at its face and you'll be greeted by an expression that looks like a pig emoji. Believe it or not, this isn't some genetic quirk, it's just the way the angular rough shark is. Interestingly, in certain harbors, people refer to it as the pigfish, a name that actually fits the bill quite well. Nature gave these sharks a flat head, wide set eyes, and a pinkish snout, but apparently it thought it was not enough to deserve the nickname pigfish. So now, when this shark is pulled out of the water, it makes a sound like a grunt. And we'd let you listen to it, but we haven't come across any recordings of this phenomenon, so we'll just have to take the words of those who've heard it. If you've got a fear of sharks, you might think it's as simple as steering clear of the ocean where they hang out. That seems like a pretty smart move, right? I mean, Sharknado's something you only see in those cheesy horror flicks, I hope. But here's the kicker. If you're genuinely afraid of sharks, there are a few islands you might want to avoid because some sharks, about nine different species, like to stroll on land there. Yep, you heard it right. These sharks use their fins to paddle around in the shallow water, and some even venture onto the beach from time to time. Sharks spend most of their time strolling along the ocean floor, and they're not just taking leisurely walks. They stick to the bottom of the ocean to sneak their heads under rocks and coral in search of hidden prey, like tiny fish and invertebrates. Something like that. This behavior has been spotted in sharks near the coasts of New Guinea, Australia, and at least three Indonesian islands. What makes it intriguing is that in 2020, scientists only officially described four out of nine shark species that do this. Who knows, there might be more walking sharks out there that we're yet to discover. We don't know a whole lot about these sharks. It's not even clear how many of them actually walk out of the water completely, but some are pretty good at heading back to the ocean when the tide sweeps them. It's almost like catching the last bus that's already pulling away, but in the ocean. And here's another interesting twist. Some think the distant ancestor of land animals might have been a bony fish, not a shark. But those walking sharks are giving us a cool opportunity to see how something like that might have happened. Yeah, that's roughly what our ancestors looked like millions of years back. You look a bit like them, by the way. Meh. A shark eat shark world. Life as a shark might seem thrilling and perilous, like an endless adventure, however, recent research sheds light on a less than enviable aspect of their existence. It turns out that sharks have a long history of eating their own kind. In a remarkable series of observations, we've captured rare footage of a great white shark, a real cannibal, almost tearing a fellow shark, measuring over 11 feet in half. This savage attack left the smaller shark with two grave injuries, including a sizable bite right in the middle of its body. But to take such a big chunk out of one shark, you'd need a huge amount of energy. Even if you're also a shark, it's not enough. You have to be really huge. So there's a reason sharks are apex predators. Don't imagine it's some lone shark going after others because it's hungry or lost its mind. It's not even a specific type of shark picking on others. Scientists discovered that lots of different sharks have a habit of going after each other. And don't think it's something new, even in the days of ancient sharks like the Orthocanthus that swam the oceans 300 million years ago, they found baby shark teeth in fossilized poop. So you could say cannibalism is a really old tradition among sharks. A shark hoax. Have you heard about the weird goblin shark that went viral on the web in 2020? Maybe you've even seen a photo of it? This long-nosed creature washed up on a beach in Greece where it caught the attention of a passerby. The man took a photo of the specimen and sent it to a team of scientists who identified the fish as a perfectly preserved young goblin shark. This was an extraordinary discovery. No one had ever spotted this mysterious deep-sea species in the Mediterranean before. If you look at the habitat of the goblin shark, you can see why everyone was so surprised. But soon after the study of the find was published in 2022 in a scientific journal, experts started having their doubts. And not just because of the weird location where the shark was found. Critics noted that the fish bore a striking resemblance to a plastic toy available on eBay. As a result, a comment had to be added to the study, the goblin shark in the photo is hardly a natural specimen. It must be quite awkward when your exciting discovery turns out to be a cheap plastic toy. Weird Baby Shark 
A rare shark of ghost shark species, a relative of sharks and rays that's not usually found free swimming in the ocean, has been discovered by scientists from New Zealand. It's likely that this shark had recently hatched, as its belly was full of egg yolk. The shark simply didn't have time to find more snacks. Ghost sharks inhabit the deep ocean, often residing at depths of around 4,000 feet, making them quite elusive to spot. However, the sight of these ghostly creatures is truly captivating as they appear utterly alien. Moreover, the recent discovery of a baby ghost shark holds significant scientific value since studying rare creatures always poses understandable challenges. Honestly, this little one doesn't resemble a typical shark. It looks more like an extraterrestrial or a character out of a sci-fi flick. It's genuinely astonishing to think that creatures like that could exist. A Zombie Shark Recently, an urban explorer stumbled upon an eerie sight in an abandoned aquarium, a shark that seemed straight out of a zombie movie. A girl and her friend decided to check out an undisclosed abandoned aquarium in Spain where they captured some seriously creepy footage. This footage sheds a light on what happens to former zoos or aquariums when they're left to decay. It's not just a matter of neglect. Inside a shattered glass enclosure lay the body of a small, dead shark. The shark appeared somewhat preserved, but exposure to the air had caused visible decomposition, making it look like a zombie with decaying muscles and bones. After watching all those zombie invasion flicks, it's hard not to take a step back. However, it's important to note that the shark was already deceased before the place was abandoned. Some of the animals might have been relocated, possibly to other aquariums or zoos. As for the dead shark, it was left behind for reasons that remain a mystery. Perhaps it was there to provide content for vloggers. I was there, Gandalf. What is this shark doing in our video? Do you notice something odd about it? Well, this Greenland shark is ancient, possibly around 400 to 500 years old. It's the world's oldest vertebrate, with a lifespan that could reach over 500 years. Scientists think these sharks typically live for at least 272 years, but some of the biggest ones might push 335 to 392 years. It takes them a whopping 156 years to grow up, which is a very long teenage phase. It's not a shark, it's more like an elf. The remarkable durability of these colossal deep sea creatures owes much to their permanently cold habitats. In the Arctic, the chilly surroundings demand a slow metabolic pace, a trait linked to longevity in various animal species. However, the Greenland shark surpassed them all. I think I'll go take an ice bath. See you later.